As an island nation, the UK has a wealth of fish species to choose from. Now, with governments encouraging us to eat two portions of fish a week, and with the clear scientifically proven benefits to having fish as part of a balanced diet, it has become more important than ever that we look after our fish stocks in an environmentally friendly and sustainable fashion. Round the coast of the UK, fishermen, scientists, governments and many other stakeholders are trying to get the balance right between offsetting the needs of the environment and the need to maintain our fishing industry and a crucial food supply. My name is Trevor Jones, I'm based in Port Pemberton in Bangor in North Wales. Um, I'm a mussel farmer and a green crab potter. I've been involved in fishing for the last 30 years. I think fishermen are very keen to work with uh, the regulators of the fishing industry and to, to, to have good regulations um, governing the industry. We're also very keen to act in a sustainable manner. Ensuring that we have fish stocks for the future requires many different approaches. From technical methods, such as the size of mesh in fish nets, to controlling the amount of fish being caught. Another area of advice is to use marine protected areas, or MPAs. Marine protected areas are management tools which are used to fulfil two totally different objectives. On the one hand, they can be used as conservation tools to help us preserve marine biodiversity but they can also be used as fisheries management tools to reduce the effect of overfishing on precious stocks. One important area in getting the balance between provision of food and environmental responsibility is scallop dredging. Scallop dredgers tow their fishing gear behind the vessel in close contact with the seabed. The scallop dredges have to be extremely robust, they're made out of metal and by their nature they have to be extremely heavy. However, the most important thing to appreciate is the seabed is not a uniform environment. Now what that means is in some coastal waters which are subject to very high levels of natural disturbance from winter storms and high current velocities, the animals that live in that habitat naturally are adapted to these high levels of disturbance. It's a very harsh place to be as an organism. When you start scallop fishing in these type of environments, the effect of that uh, additional activity, that additional disturbance, is relatively minor compared to all the natural disturbance that's occurring. So if you like, scallop dredging can be considered to be quite sustainable from an environmental point of view in these sorts of habitats. Seafish is the independent UK body that works to ensure a sustainable and profitable future for the seafood industry. It works with a range of organisations in order to provide information, support and advice on all aspects of the seafood industry, with one area of advice being the implementation and management of marine protected areas. There's lots of issues associated with marine protected areas. We'll see fishing being restricted and even some cases being prevented. It's obviously like the consequences on the fishermen, on their livelihoods, on industries associated with fishing on the land. The effect that no-take zones are going to have on, on local communities and families, well, if, if the ones that are proposed go ahead here um, are, are implemented, um, they'll have a drastic effect on a, a large number of people who work, you know, on the margins of profitability, but in a very sustainable manner. There's definitely been a sea change in attitudes towards sustainability in the past 10 years. Fishermen understand there's a need for sustainability and they're working with MSC and other organisations to help achieve it. And with great examples like the Isle of Man and Shetland who've identified best practice and shown that MSC certification can be achieved in these fisheries, there's definitely a path for other fisheries to follow towards sustainability. The use of marine protected areas is nothing new and indeed the fishing industry has been working to help implement and monitor them for many years. We had, uh, for example, over 200 uh, fisheries closed areas, real-time closures in the North Sea instigated by fishermen to protect juvenile whitefish, that's cod, saith, haddock, etc. Fishermen understand there's now a need, uh, a requirement for marine protected areas and they also I believe realise that they can actually uh, better inform the process so the marine protected areas are in the, in, in the most appropriate place uh, with minimal or less impact on fishing. My name's James Wilson based in Port Penryn, Bangor. We're a mussel mariculturist. It's a family firm, been going about 30 years. Without us 
being able to use the environment in a sustainable way, then, then you know, we're, we're, we're facing a short-term future of our own imposing. We're all in this for the long term. I'm, I'm, part of, I'm a third generation fisherman, you know. I, I wouldn't mind if my kids came into this industry. I want there to be an industry there for them to come into. Um, we, we, we have to look after the environment. There needs to be a balance between protecting wildlife and producing seafood. Obviously, uh, a healthy sea equates to a productive sea and, and fishermen uh, would wish that. The coastal fisheries especially have been fished for hundreds of years and are still producing lobsters, crabs, etc. So whilst we, the, fi the fishermen understand the need for marine conservation uh, areas, marine protected areas, we also want to see the fishermen continue.